we will move on to the second freedom, and that is the freedom of worship. And this award was handed out this morning by the chairwoman, the voorzitter of the National Institute of Human Rights in the Netherlands. But she's also a writer and a television host. And just like Lian Gogali, she is a theologian and she lived in Indonesia as a child. So there have many similarities between those two. Please welcome Jacobina Geel. Hi, Jacobina. Hello, Amber. A very warm welcome here. Yes, nice to meet you again. <laughs> nice to meet you again, yes. Like I just said, there are a lot of similarities between you there and are. this laureate. Maybe I've even missed out. You're both women, for example. Also Not very the least important. of all. Eh? Yes. So which of those do you think is the most important to you? Uh, what I admire a lot in uh, Lian is the fact that um, religion to her uh, is... Uh, an inspiration to fight for the freedom of worship, but also for other human rights. Uh, and I think that is a very strong connection. I know that even in this room today, people may feel differently about religion, but in my opinion and in my belief, religion at its best supports uh, a sustainably peaceful society. And it can be a source of inspiration to, to work for that kind of society. And I think that is what Lian is doing. And I recognize that very much uh, in myself. And I think that is a very strong connection. Hmm. And do you also, because you've studied her work in the last yeah. weeks, um, is there also a part of her message that you use in your work here in the Netherlands? Well, I'm not quite sure if it's exactly the same, because she lives in a completely different culture and community, of course. But what I think we could learn from her is that uh, she tries to uh, encourage dialogue between people of completely different backgrounds and beliefs and religions. And she doesn't do it, and I think that's something we can learn by uh, 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 organizing debates, so mm -hmm. intellectually, mm -hmm. but she tries to make the connection on a very much more practical level mm -hmm. by really getting to know each other's daily life and uh, doing the things you do to, to make a living, clean the house, uh, raise the children, cook yeah. the food, uh, and this kind of uh, practical approach to uh, commonality, I think is something we could learn from. Yes. I think so. I think so too. I think everyone is very curious now to see a little bit more of her work. So have, uh, let's have a look of a portrait of her, of Liam Gogali. Shall I sit down? Yeah. Please. Without freedom of worship, we cannot have peace if we cannot find the truth. And there is no way to find the truth unless everyone has the freedom to worship and share their experience with their faith, culture, and rituals. Starting in 1998, at the fall of our military dictatorship, the Poso region of Sulawesi Islands has seen multiple episodes of what many would call religious violence, including riots, massacres, shooting, beheadings, and terrorist attacks. The people of Poso have greatly suffered and have lost many of their freedoms in the process. So it was then I realized there was a huge space for religious dialogue and freedom to take place. I founded the women's school as a meeting space between women of different religions. I have seen women who survived conflict, had their houses burned down, watched their family member get murdered, who are now leaders of their community and promote peace and justice for all faiths. Women are the secret source of the society. Women bring change, women bring peace, women bring prosperity. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Lian Gogali. Hi there. Hello. Welcome here. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah. I'm excited, overwhelmed, 
everything is just mixed. <laughs> everything yeah. is mixed. Yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of time, so yeah. let's dive right in. Um, you've studied theology yeah. in Yogyakarta. Yes. And then you went back to your home region, Poso, mm -hmm. to conduct research. You interviewed women. Yeah. But you thought, this is not enough. I just don't want to only interview them, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. So you decided to start a school, especially for women. Yeah. Why a school and why especially for women? Uh, first, and the important one is that uh, I believe that education, knowledge and critical education, not only can save lives, but also can save the future when we have a, a, a critical education. Uh, that's uh, well, uh, how I realized because I have uh, two um, uh, events in my personal life. So when I met with uh, groups of uh, Muslims in uh, certain um, uh, situations, when they asked me about uh, many things about the Christianity, and they are the group Muslim groups uh, that ask me about the Christianity, and um, I should answer that, that to, ans to save my life. And mm. I think uh, this, um, uh, this happened, and I'm still alive until now. And, mm. <laughs> and I think um, that's a moment in, that I then believe that um, education can, uh, yeah. can save you, but also can open up the dialogue between so that Muslims. That was the moment. Yeah. That yeah. It clicked for you. Yeah. A, a Muslim group of people asked you questions about your Christianity. Yeah and then you got closer to each other. Yeah, but also the story of the women, I think, because uh, most of them is uh, suffering during the conflict, and, uh, but they have a story uh, where they help each other between Muslim and Christians, and the story never heard about. Mm. So I think uh, there is a need uh, to open uh, uh, the space for, for the women, mm. uh, so then their voice can be heard. Mm. Yeah. I think that is very important what you say. And also, I, I called you this morning a free spirit. And I think that is uh, something I, I admire very much in Lian, that she, uh, she, she is not your usual Christian woman uh, in a male-dominated uh, religion, but she stands up for her own rights and her own spirituality. And she's trying to, to, to reach out for women to... Uh, to connect them with each other, but also to, to, to encourage them to stand up for their own right. spirituality. Yeah. Uh, and that in itself is a sort of freedom. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. I understood you. And I thought that was very beautiful. Yeah, yeah thank said. you. Yeah. yeah, because like I saw many experience of the women who experienced layer of the violence during the conflict and also post the conflict. And then most of them, for example, uh, they raped, but they pushed by the society to marry with the rapists. And they, uh, they have to do that because they Women need to marry with their rapists. With their is because they have no choice and they mm. should follow the, the rules of the society mm. to save the face of, the, mm. uh, of their family. Mm. And I'm, as a single mom who uh, decided to not marry, I also, feel, I also uh, have the same experience, but because I have education, I fight for my own rights. That's why I think that uh, if women can uh, have the education, they can also fight for their own rights. Their own rights in the beginning, but they also can fight for their uh, community rights uh, to mm. have their own uh, human rights to have their uh, their rights, but also for the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can and I ask one question? Yeah, because I'm very curious. How do do the men in your community respond to your initiative and to all the women? Because it's a growing number. Uh, mm -hmm doing this dialogue and, and getting stronger and more, well, courageous and more leaders, maybe. Mm. How do the men respond? <laughs> Uh, there is many funny stories, but it's interesting because uh, most of the women who join with the women's school is uh, the women who not even uh, graduate from elementary school. They, uh, most of them is uh, graduate from junior high school and elementary school. They're not allowed to go out and to speak up and also express their, uh, their, uh, their opinion. But when they join with the women's school, they can argue with their husband. And that hmm. position is like a threaten the husband. So some of the husband is... Uh, uh, threaten their wife to be to divorce because uh, she now become more smart than her husband and also some of the uh, husband also uh, text me and also come to my house to 
to ask me to stop to teach the women because it threatened their, their positions. And what do you say then? What do uh, you tell I them? Ask, I ask them to cook together. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first method I do. So, so then they can like a feeling that uh, this is not about a man and women. Mm -hmm. It is this is about uh, how we equally uh, live together and uh, do things together in daily life. And then, uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, the first thing I, I do. And we also, uh, the, the, the story of the woman who almost divorced by her husband because he, she joined with the women's schools is uh, become one of the uh, inspiration story for other husbands because the woman uh, successfully negotiate with her husband by, uh, by uh, doing the lobby. Uh, mm -hmm. negotiate that's how we call it it's like a political start from your house <laughs> and when you can yeah. negotiate your position your rights uh, for yourself yeah. yeah yeah wow there is a, a question of a student um, okay. who is called Katelijne Arnoutse it's a very Dutch name and uh, we're <laughs> going to see her now behind us dear Leon Gugel I am a student from Kofein College and I have a few questions for you first what were the reactions to your project? And second, were there more negative or more positive reactions to your project? Mm -hmm. hmm. That's interesting. Uh, it's uh, it's depending about uh, how people uh, think about uh, what you... what. What was the goal of the of the uh, of the activities? Because some of the people, if they threaten in the, uh, the, the they feel threatened in their society. Um, uh, because of women's positions, so they will uh, they will not support. Not only they will support, but they, they also threaten the women who join with the uh, women. They threaten school. the women uh, who join your school. Yeah, yeah. Threaten women. means that they not only do not allow, but they also mm. uh, make uh, violence uh, to their uh, their uh, women who join with the violence with the, uh, to the women. Yes, it's wow. like a domestic violence like mm. that one. But I think it's really interesting the way how women finds a way to negotiate. They even like. Uh, doing some trick, uh, political trick, so then they can use, uh, they can have access for the education. So it's, it's hmm. really great to see. Hmm. Wow. Um, there's one more question also from the public. Ramon van Geen. There you are. Let's have a, a small moment. He's here at the front. Oh, yeah. There's a microphone coming to you so okay. we can all hear you. Ramon. Um, in your work, you've already empowered so many women, and I was just wondering what is, according to you, the power of women in bringing change and prosperity and peace? Mm. So as I told before, that's uh, for me, uh, and from my experience, a woman is women are the secret sauce of the society. If you involve women in the, uh, in the conversation of peace, so if you're allowing them, so it means that you invest the future. You invest the uh, the uh, the life of uh, of uh, human rights uh, uh, start from uh, from the uh, women. Uh, so I think uh, not only that uh, women can change uh, from they can turn on strangers to be friends, and they can turn on uh, friends to be a community. So the community can be. Uh, can be uh, work together to to make sure for the peace and, and justice to prevail. So hmm. I think uh, this uh, really our greatest investment to women for our future. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Do you think this award will make a difference for your work? Uh, first of all, t uh, I think it's to be seen that uh, the uh, women's perspective on Taylor again uh, could be heard, because most of the uh, the conversation about religions most uh, dominate by by men, and I think it's not only fair, but it's not uh, making a difference uh, in the world. So if it can be seen, so it means that uh, we can start a, a life differently, where uh, the religions is not about the. Uh, rituals or the ceremonies, mm -hmm. uh, not about going to church or mosque or other uh, uh, worship prayer, but it's about how you live your lives uh, uh, as a human being. Mm -hmm. Not about yeah. the rules, but about your practice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that we can conclude that you are seen here today by all of us. And there's one sentence that you said at the beginning that really resonates with me. You said, education can not only save lives, but also save the future. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Lian Gogali. So Thank you. And Jacobine Geel. Dank je wel.